Louis Augusta was born in the Palace of Versailles. He was one of seven children and the second surviving son of Louis, the Dauphin of France, and thus the grandson of Louis XV of France. His mother was Marie Joseph of Saxony, the daughter of Frederick Augustus of Saxony, King of Poland. Louis Augusta grew up strong and healthy, though very shy. He was tutored by French noblemen and studied religion, morality, and humanities. He excelled in Latin, history, geography, and astronomy, and achieved fluency in Italian and English. Louis enjoyed physical activities, including hunting and wrestling. From an early age, he enjoyed locksmithing, which became a lifelong hobby. Louis Augusta was ill-prepared for the throne he was soon to inherit. Following the death of his parents, both from tuberculosis, Louis' tutors provided him with poor interpersonal skills. They exaggerated his shyness by teaching him that austerity was a sign of a strong character in monarchs. As a result, he presented himself as being very indecisive. Family life. On May 16, 1770, at the age of 15, Louis married the 14-year-old Habsburg Marie Antoinette. The marriage was met with some doubt by members of the French court as they remembered of a previous alliance with the Habsburg pulled France into a seven-year war. The French people eventually came to loathe Marie Antoinette. First few years for the marriage of Louis and Marie Antoinette were amicable, but distant. His shyness kept him distant from her in private, and his fear of her manipulations made him cold to her in public. Seven years later, due to a physical defect on Louis's part, the royal couple became parents of four children, Mary Theresa, Louis Joseph, Louis Charles, and Sophie Beatrix. On the death of his grandfather, Louis XV, Louis succeeded to the French throne on May 10, 1774. At the time, he was still immature, lacking in self-confidence. While Louis XVI wanted to be a good king and help his subjects, he faced enormous debt problems and rising resentment towards a despotic monarchy. His failure to successfully address serious fiscal problems would bother him for most of his reign. Louis lacked sufficient strength of character and decisiveness to combat the influence of court factions or give support to reformers in their efforts to improve France's government. Good things he did. In the early years of his reign, Louis XVI focused on his religion uniformity and foreign policy. On the home front, he invoked an edict that granted non-Catholic legal status on the right to openly practice their faith. Louis XVI's early foreign policy, success supported by the American colonies, fight for the independence for France's arch enemy, Great Britain, in the American Revolutionary War, which later made France heavily in debt. There was a vocal opposition to the perceived inhumanity of serfdom, particularly from famed Enlightenment writer Voltaire, in 1779, Louis XVI abolished serfdom on all the land under the royal controls and hoped that this would encourage other landowners to do the same. Louis also abolished torture and approved the design of the guillotine. Instead of a flat, dull blade, he replaced it with a sharp, slanted blade for smoother executions. Louis XVI's policy of not raising taxes and taking out international loans, including to fund the American Revolution, increased France's debt setting in motion the French Revolution. By the mid-1780s, the country was near bankruptcy, which forced the king to support radical fiscal reforms not favorable with the nobles or the people. Louis wouldn't take anyone's help, and he was keeping people in the dark. There was only one thing Louis could do. He called the Estates General to address the fiscal crisis. The meeting didn't go so well, and the Estates General turned into the National Assembly and they planned to develop a constitution. Louis XVI then resisted and declared the assembly null and void and called out the army to restore order. Public discretion grew and a national guard formed to resist the king's actions. By July of 1789, he was forced to acknowledge the national assembly's authority. Eventually, riots started in the streets of France, most notably the storming of the Bastille to show defiance towards Louis XVI. Louis ignored advice from his advisors about the new constitution because of his teachings, agreeing to a disastrous attempt to escape to the eastern frontier in June of 1791 to try to build an army in Austria and reclaim France. He was then captured at Varnes and he was taken back to Paris, where he was dethroned. 
death by execution. Louis XVI was proven guilty for the crimes against the French people and treason for plotting to overthrow the government and the revolution. He made matters worse by often escaping to more pleasurable activities like hunting and locksmithing. He was then sentenced to death. On January 21st, 1793, Louis was executed by the guillotine, making him the last king of France.